Good evening. Today I'm going to show you my walk from very earlier period to the most recent one, <laughs> including some of the disaster relief projects. Uh, we as architects uh, have been working for privileged people uh, designing monument in order to visualize the power and the money by architecture for uh, privileged people like re religious group, rich people, king, even the, the now big corporations and the government. However, um, I think there's a, the other important role for architects uh, working in disaster area. For example, there are so many disaster, natural disasters happening all over the world. Earthquake, flooding, tsunami, hurricane, so on. But I must say, most of natural disasters are not natural. They are almost man-made disasters. For example, earthquake, can, can you turn off the slides? For example, earthquake never kills people, but collapse of the building kills the people. So that is responsible for architects. And also flooding. Flooding is becoming bigger and more often because of deforestation. We cut the trees for construction, and which cause the, the flooding. So that, that also that is a responsible for architects. After the disaster happened, always we need to provide water, medicine, and food. Then we have to provide the temporary shelter and also permanent houses. That is also a responsibility for architects. That's why I really believe that, that as well as building the monument, I have nothing, uh, I love to make a monument too, but also I think it's important for architects to play a role after the disaster. So today I will show you some of the projects and including those uh, that disaster relief project. Okay, can you start, start slide, please? After I, I graduated from school in Cooper, uh, called Cooper Union in New York, 1984, I started all my practice uh, immediately after in Tokyo because I didn't have any working experience. I st uh, started designing exhibition. Let me stand, it's easier to, to point out. The, uh, the Alberto, I designed Alberto at the beginning of my career. Because Alberto was, uh, I was a big fan of Alberto. I've been to Finland many times. Then I brought this exhibition from Museum of Modern Art, and I designed uh, the exhibition uh, installation. Because I wanted to uh, design the exhibition like Alberto's uh, building and interior, but I didn't have um, the, the budget to use timber, wood, as Alberto did. Also, I didn't want to waste the wood, such a precious material, after the temporary exhibition. So I was looking for some alternative material to replace wood. Then I found out the paper chip made of recycled paper. Because paper chip was all over my studio. For example, that, that after we finish with the tracing paper, the paper chip remains. If, when we finish fax paper roll, there's paper chip remain. And so many paper chip we used uh, in my studio, we always waste them. And I knew it's very strong, and we can make different sizes. And uh, so here, I use the small diameter tubes uh, as a ceiling, like a Alberto's Beepley's library. And the larger diameter tubes were used as a freestanding partition. This was the first time I ever used a paper tube for the, the interior. Then I started testing the, the material, because it was much stronger than I expected, and the various sizes was, were available. Next, please. Then also, I started the, uh, the developing a prefab house, always that I had a very low cost project. And uh, this is one of the, the, the prefab fabrication house I developed called Furniture House. When, we experience, when I experienced the earthquake, some people uh, injured, even killed uh, because of the heavy furniture. 
uh, by earthquake, heavy furniture fall down on the people, then they even they injured, even they killed. But also some people they save their life because they are in between heavy furniture and uh, when the roof fall down on the people, they save life because of the, those heavy strong furniture. Then I thought, why not to design the house just with the furniture? So this house, all the, 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 the wall and the column is made of the fa factory made furniture. Right hand side, this is standard uh, furniture unit. This is a closet, 90 centimeter wide and 2.4 meter in height. And depth is depending on the type of the function of the furniture. And the insulation is already installed and the inside and outside are already painted. Next, please. And then the, on, on the regular foundation, we just bring into the furniture and we connect the furniture with foundation, vertically, and the horizontally furniture and furniture. Next, please. Then in one day, all the structural cabinets are installed, already inside and outside painted. Next day, just you have to put the, the roof. This is a single story building, but if you want to have a two story, just you have to repeat the putting the furniture on top of this platform. Next, please. Then you just put the ceiling, floor, put the kitchen, the bathroom. And uh, we don't have to depending on the skilled carpenter. Anybody can build it. And even this bookshelf is also a structural, ca structural uh, uh, cabinet. Next, please. Then I applied this idea to the other project uh, recently. I was asked to design a house in China near the Great Wall. Uh, the problem was that the site was so far away, it was very difficult to, to, to do the site, site supervision. That's why I decided to use this furniture house system, because we don't have to supervise the site so carefully, as long as we supervise the quality of the furniture in the factory. But also I wanted to use some, some local material, since wood is very expensive in China, and I also found out that the, they make the, the plywood out of bamboo. Uh, they use bamboo plywood for the, the, the concrete form. Then I start working with a local uh, plywood company to make uh, the laminated uh, bamboo. This is the laminated bamboo I made for the testing. I brought back to Tokyo to test it, and I found out strength was much stronger than the timber. So this is uh, all the ma made of uh, the furniture, uh, the frames, Outside, inside, everything made of laminated bamboo. Next, please. Everything, the, the, even inside the finish, the columns, uh, everything is made of laminated bamboo. And uh, because material is so cheap and strong, so we can make the, 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 the minimize the, the size of the, the structure. Next, please. This is a recent project called Nomadic Museum. And uh, the, the structural idea of this project is further developed from furniture house. Furniture house, this is the storage became the, the main structure of the cabinet, the main structure of the house, carrying the vertical and the lateral force. This is the nomadic museum, which is, was, I was asked by the, 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 the Canadian photographer Gregory, Gregory Cobea to design his own museum, which travels city to city and country to country, country to country. And uh, the size of the museum here is over 4,500 square meter. And the challenge of the, the idea of nomadic transportable museum is the, uh, the how to economize the, the transportation cost. So I decided to use a shipping container because shipping container is an international standard. For, for example, in New York, this is open only for three months. We just rent the container locally in, from New Jersey in front of the, the, the Manhattan, temporary. Then after the museum is over, we just return to the original the place. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the pier, wooden pier on the Hudson River. And the, the, side, the length is about two, uh, 205 meter. And uh, the, since this wood pier, wooden pier is very weak, I wanted to minimize the number of the container, minimizing the, the weight of the structure, and so that I created a checkerboard pattern. And also this is the creating kind of three-dimensional image by putting a shadow. And the roof is supported by paper tube. Next, please. As you see, the, all the, 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 the can you move left-hand side, please? Okay. 
Uh, there's only four point uh, on container, the, the connection. I just use a standard connection to connect the, 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 the containers. And uh, as you see, this is uh, the, the paper tube, which is a 75 centimeter diameter. Wall thickness is 50 mi millimeter. Height is 10 meter. Next, please. All the fo his photo was exhibited in between the columns because each photo has their own world, and I wanted to articulate each world of each photos so that we decide to put in between the columns, creating the shadow uh, behind. Um, next, please. Then this museum, this was last year in New York, and this year the uh, uh, museum uh, opened in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica Beach. Uh, because the site was almost square, in New York, uh, the site was linear, like over 200 meter, but here, the site was almost too, uh, square. It was impossible to put 200 meter uh, the, the museum. Also, Gregory asked me to uh, add some more spaces for the extra theater and the bookstore. So then finally, the museum became 5,600 square meter. Uh, I, did, I separated the 100 meter gallery to two galleries and creating the, the space in, the, in between. Instead of adding any num more com uh, container, I just created intermediate space between two galleries in order to create the, the additional theater and bookstore. And so I, as you see, in between the container, you can see the, the, the columns and the galleries, uh, the both sides of the theater. Next, please. Uh, actually, this museum uh, goes to the Tokyo and also the, the Berlin next year. And then it's travel uh, the, uh, the few cities in, in uh, Europe. Um, right hand side is the one of my uh, area house called Curtain Wall House. Left hand side is one of my favorite house designed by Miss Van der Rohe, uh, Franz Wolf's house. This Franz Wolf's house is a revolutionary house in history of Western architecture because the house become totally transparent visually. But I must say, this is visually transparent, not physically. All the glass windows are fixed. This is only one door to go out. If you compare the transparency between this mis trans mis and transparency and traditional Japanese house, when uh, we open up all the sliding doors, uh, Japanese traditional house become visually transparent as well as physically transparent, because uh, space outside, inside uh, the, the totally connected, so that the, I, I, I can say that the, the space becomes physically transparent too. So that is the difference in transparency between Mission way and traditional Japanese way. My, uh, the, uh, when I went to visit my client, uh, they were living in the same spot in traditional old Japanese house, enjoying flexibility and openness of the house. So I decided to carry on their lifestyle into the new building. It's simply a three-story steel structure, and the rooms are divided with outside, uh, divided with glass sliding doors, which can totally open to connect inside <coughs> outside. Next, please. And uh, the edge of the, the uh, terrace are uh, 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 covered by the curtain in order to keep privacy and also the, as a sunshade. Even when uh, the curtain was blown away, the edge of, edge of the house uh, uh, extended to the street. And uh, the, as you know, the Miss Van der is an architect who invented so-called curtain wall, glass and the metal window frame for the building. Instead of using a Messian curtain wall, I just used a regular curtain to design the curtain wall house. Next, please. This is a house called Two Fifths House. The name came from the geometry. There is a five linear rectangular spaces, and the two of five are used as an indoor space. This is the exterior front courtyard. This is the living room inside, and the middle courtyard outside, inside, outside again. Wherever you see that line, there are the sliding glass doors, which goes outside of the wall when it's open. Next, please. This photo was taken from front courtyard when the, in good days it, that all the sliding door goes outside of the wall and connecting the, the, all the, 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 the surface, to, all the, 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 the floor together. 
and uh, that the juxtaposition of uh, outdoor, indoor, uh, outdoor, indoor exterior space. It's the middle courtyard, which you can close by using the, the membrane uh, roof to create in, uh, semi-indoor space. I put the purposely the Mission type of the glass box on the upper floor in order to create uh, the Japanese type of transparent space to compare transparency between Mission way and traditional Japanese way underneath. Next, please. This is a house called uh, the picture, picture window house. Usually, picture window is a square window on the wall, framing beautiful landscape like a painting. Instead of making a square window on the wall, I made the older structure, older house as a picture window in order to cut beautiful horizontal ocean view. Both sides of the house is made of the glass sliding door, which can be opened totally, front and the back. Next, please. And this is the, the, the picture window showing the, the, the horizontal ocean view. And uh, the, when the both side is open, the garden exterior and interior and the, the front, the view is totally connected. Next, please. Right hand side is the, uh, the small weekend house for a single woman. And uh, she wanted to make a, a tiny, tiny uh, the, the, the weekend house uh, only used by herself. This was built on the hill. Left hand side is another my favorite design by Miss Pandero, uh, Barcelona Pavilion. After Barcelona Pavilion was rebuilt in Barcelona, I've been there a couple of times. It's really amazing architecture. However, if you see the, the building structurally, it's quite ambiguous because always columns are standing so close to the wall. Then I wonder whether this column is really a structure or just an ornament. And also I wonder whether this wall is a structure or not. Then I calculated the, 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 the structure just with the columns, without any walls. And there is enough number of the columns to support the, the roof. Then I also calculated just with the walls, without any columns. There is enough number of the, the, the walls there to support also the roof. So this means that the structure, the, the, the meaning of the column and the wall is quite ambiguous here. My wallless house, I tried to investigate and clarify the meaning of fundamental architecture elements like column, floor, wall, roof, so on. Next, please. As I said, this house was built on the hill. Usually, in order to make a house on the hill, you have to make a kind of floating, floating platform, but I didn't have the money to do it. So what I did is digging half the ground to put this soil here in order to create a small platform. However, the hill still continued this way. That's why this wall has to be usually concrete cantilever retaining, retaining wall to support the pressure of the earth. Instead of making strong concrete retaining wall, I just made this concrete floor curved. This is upside down of the arch so that the, all the pressure of the, the, the earth are naturally transferred to the floor. So this is not the ca heavy cantilever wall. This is just same thickness of the, the floor. So this is not wall, this is a part of the floor. Besides that, there, is a, there are only four, three small columns. Diameter is only 55 millimeter. In Japan, especially if you have an earthquake, it's impossible to have such a small columns. And it's obviously, visually, you can say this is only supporting the vertical force, not lateral force. Designing the roof as a, uh, the diaphragm all the lateral force are transferred to the edge of this floor so that none of the lateral force come to the top of the column. That's why it's, it's supporting only vertical force. Three sides of the, the, the house is uh, covered by the sliding glass door. Uh, this can be totally closed and also this canopy can be ca come down to cover the, the glass window when people are not here. And there is a kitchen and the bathroom totally exposed. If somebody comes to visit her, she can just close the bathroom. Even this is a movable closet to divide that small bed, to, uh, to divide into two small bedrooms in case somebody wants to stay over. Next, please. This is a house called Nine Square Grid House. This is a parallel a structural cabinet creating the, the, uh, the, the one square space 
which can be divided into small nine squares, but using sliding door. But also they can divide it into the linear rectangular spaces or middle size or square, depending on the season, depending on the uh, occasion. There is only two room has a name, the kitchen and the bathroom. Other than that, there is no name like a living room, bedroom, so on. In the summer, we can put the, we can put the bed. The northern side of the house is cooler. But in the winter, we put the bed in the southern side of the, the house. It's warmer. In case you fight with your wife, you can separate the two bedrooms. <laughs> Next, please. This two photo was taken from the same side, from the garden. It's one just big space. All the storage and the, uh, the refrigerator, air conditioning, everything in the structural cabinet. Also, you can divide into small square spaces. Next, please. This is the first phase of the, the small museum project, Paper Art Museum. First phase is just renovating old factory into the gallery with a minimum budget. So what I did is just only small thing. Removing the, the walls, because they are non-structure. Replacing by the, the, the st standard uh, overhanging shutter made of the glass fiber. Usually, overhanging shutter, like a garage door, when it's open, it comes inside of the space, like this. But the, I just put it this the other way around. So instead of coming inside, when it's open, it goes outside, uh, creating nice canopy, uh, connecting inside and outside uh, garden with uh, intermediate space. So this is just, uh, the, uh, I just use a standard uh, uh, shutter uh, the other way around. Next, please. Then second phase is just making new museum. It's a small museum for the paper art. Uh, it looks like one building, but actually this is made of two buildings. South side is administration, and the north side is three story with the galleries. Just connected with the bridge and the shutter and the main brain roof. This is double glazed uh, fiberglass shutter for the, the outside uh, the cladding, and also the, this is stacking shutter. When museum is open, this goes up. Next, please. South side of the administration side, that the, all the facade can be open to create a canopy connecting inside and outside. And also there is a glass sliding door, which can be totally open. Next, please. And so as you see, when the museum is closed, this shutter comes down and the sliding door can be closed. And this can be, the shutter can be open. And all the sliding door also can be open to connect the rooms, depending on the type of exhibition they create. Next, please. This is a small restaurant building in Tokyo. Also, the, the, the two facades of the building are made of stacking, stacking glass shutter. When the, the restaurant opens, this stacking shutter goes up to, to have an opening. Then, in, in nice fine day, next please, all the shutter goes up, stored inside the roof. So, the, totally the, the, the outside terrace and the inside of the restaurant are totally connected. Next please. Again, this is another house for the photographer. There, I call it shutter house for the photographer. There's a big photographing studio under the ground. And the house is linear and also that quite close because there's nothing to see outside. And it has to be rather the in close because that the, in order to keep privacy. Yeah, therefore, I place some small courtyard uh, inside of the, the houses. And this is a glass shut sliding glass shutter. Next, please. Left hand side, this is uh, the living room and uh, the small courtyard in front and also the side. And in the fine days, this glass shutter goes up like this and it's stuck to here and here and there, there. So all the space are, to are totally connected. You can see the living room and the dining, kitchen, and other space are totally uh, connected. Next, please. This is another example of using glass shutter. This is a small office building. Uh, this office, uh, they are, uh, this is my, uh, the, the office and the, the showroom of the dental equip equipment. And only the request from client uh, was following that. Uh, that. There is a dental college in front of this building. So they want to invite the professors and the students to their showroom. So I utilize this glass shutter. And this can be open. Next, please. 
Then there is a cafe. This is totally uh, the, the, uh, the open to the, the students and the professors. So uh, they can have a coffee free, and then same time, they overview, overlook the, the, the showroom of the dental equipment. And also this space uh, between inside and outside, this uh, not air conditioned, just uh, utilizing the close ventilation. And all the offices, they have, they have, only, they have uh, on their own small, uh, uh, very lightweight sliding glass or like a residential project, residence, like residence. They can open or close uh, the, instead of depending on the, the, the air conditioning. Next, please. This is an apartment project. Uh, right hand side is the uh, existing, was existing site before apartment was built. There are many trees, but all the position of trees are arbitrary. And I wanted to find out some kind of economical structural grid in order to economize the structure. Otherwise, if I put the columns uh, arbitrarily, depending on the position of the trees, the structure become very expensive. However, I couldn't find any square, either, neither square nor uh, the, the rectangular grid without cutting the trees. And I promise with my client I don't want to cut any trees. So I cannot cut the trees, but also the roots under the ground. Um, what I found out is a triangle grid, four meter by four meter. And uh, if, a triangle grid has a, a certain advantage. If I use a square grid like this, uh, as you see that the four beams, in, including the, ground, uh, the foundation beam, is intersecting in the point, supporting the columns. At least there's, we need three columns, three beams to, to stiffening the column, column so that we can eliminate only one in order to keep three. However, if you have a triangle grid, there are six beams intersecting so that we can eliminate up to three beams so that we, can, we have more freedom to, uh, to decide which beam has to be eliminated in, because of the position of trees and roots so that I have a total freedom uh, to decide to make an opening uh, for the trees. Next, please. Uh, this is three-story uh, triplex, duplex type of apartment. There is very 11 apartment. Each one uh, have the, the three stories. And this, as you see, this the, the trees from the, the, the holes. And uh, this is this photo was taken in the winter. That's why uh, you can see the holes. But in the in the summer. All the roof are co totally covered by the, 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 the leaves. That's why the leaves make a nice sh shading on the roof. So it's very cool in, in, the, in the summer. Also, um, before this was built, there's a forest. And these neighbor people used to uh, walk through this forest as a shortcut to the train station. In order to keep a good relationship with the neighbor, I just made the, the kind of uh, the pilotis not to put too many rooms so that the neighbor people can still walk through the, the, this uh, underneath apartment in order to keep a good relationship with the existing uh, community. Next, please. This is a house called Naked House. The uh, site is middle of the, the agriculture area. And many, there's many greenhouses. The request of the client was very unusual. Uh, they said that they want a house, they want a house like a warehouse or a greenhouse. And also they said that, that, that they don't care the, the, the privacy so much. Instead of being in the private rooms individually, they want to share time and the space in common space. That was a very unusual program I was given. So I used the, uh, the, the uh, corrugated uh, fiberglass panel, which is usually used for the greenhouse. I used them uh, two layers, uh, horizontally and uh, the vertically, uh, in order to stiffen each other and also keep air in between. And inside of this uh, double glazed uh, uh, glass fiber wall, there is a homemade uh, uh, translucent insulated material. This is a kind of noodle shape of the foam core material, which is usually used for the packing of the fruits. I put them in the plastic bag, clear plastic bag, and there is one more extra layer made of bubble packing material in order to create very well insulated but translucent wall. Next, please. 
Inside the space is made of the, uh, the fabric uh, wall. It's all attached by Veracro. So that the wall became totally translucent. And there's uh, four individual rooms. It's uh, made of the, 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 the it's, uh, inside is uh, the traditional tatami, Japanese tatami mat. Two sides of the, the room are made by a sliding door, which can be removed. And they, even though all the room, movable, wall, uh, movable rooms can be attached to create some uh, linear tatami floor, mat, floor space. And there is air conditioning for the common space. It's in, however, it's impossible to put the air conditioning inside of the movable box. In this family, the grandmother doesn't like air conditioning, but young children like putting air conditioning inside of their room. So if they want to put the air conditioning, just you have to move your box, attaching the, 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 your box into the, the, the wall, then the, this, this air conditioning becomes your individual air conditioning. And also, if you want to see outside, you just want to have to move your box attaching to the window. Then you, this becomes your personal windows. Next, please. And all the box can go out when they want to have organize some small lecture here. And also, the kids, children can play and study on top of their own boxes. Next, please. This is a small office building. Uh, I developed fire protection for steel out of the plywood. Um, and the plywood was used as a fire protection and also as a final finish. Usually we spray, agri uh, spray on steel to, fire, to protect from fire. Then we put the, uh, the, the uh, pr uh, plaster board and finishing in wood or, or stone or whatever. There are so many layers necessary. But I thought that wood can be worked as a uh, fire protection because when we design the fire protective timber structure, we do so-called oversizing. We make extra thickness of the wood around the, the, uh, uh, the wood to protect the wood. And wood is a good material to protect from the, 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 the heat uh, so that wood doesn't transfer the heat so easily. That's why the wood can, be, uh, wood can trans uh, pro protect the, the, the steel from melting. However, when the, the, the temperature goes much higher, obviously wood can be burned. Then the, 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 the wood becomes charcoal. And charcoal is a perfect fire protection material. So I tested this theory uh, in order to get the special government permission. From testing, we found out 25 millimeter thickness of plywood work as half hour fire protection. And 45 millimeter thickness of wood works as one hour fire protection. So that, uh, next please, this building, the, the steel structure was covered, uh, beam, column everywhere, and this become also final finish. It's, uh, we need less material to, uh, to do it. Next please. This is a small daycare center. I was asked to design the gymnasium next to it, and I had to move small daycare center. And this was the first phase. And uh, I've been developing the, the structure out of plywood. And especially this is not just simple plywood, this is called LVL, laminated veneer lumber. We can make linear length, length, uh, long the veneer uh, material. I prevented to make a tunnel arch, to make a vertically and horizontally. And the, the site is northern Japan, the heavy snow. I made uh, the square wooden, uh, the wooden frame outside, connecting with steel the rod the, to create a kind of the, the, the lattice truss in order to stiffen uh, this uh, 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 LVL uh, tunnel arch because this can be deflected very easily by wind and earthquake. Then its roof was finished with the stainless steel, corrugated stainless steel and also the fiber, corrugated fiberglass. Fiber Next, please. Uh, the light can be invited. And this gap between the, the, the tunnel arch and the square grid is becoming insulation. In the summer, we keep, the, we ventilate the air. In the summer, we keep hot, in the winter, we keep hot air. Next, please. And this is uh, the, the gymnasium. Because the site is a residential area, um, I didn't want to uh, expose huge volume. So I made the main, I put the main volume of the, the gymnasium under the ground. Only the roof is on top of the ground. 
This is again the, the, the development of the, the laminated veneer lumbar LVL to make arch structure. This is diagram showing the, the structure idea. As longitudinal section, I put the prevent arch uh, diagonally in order to follow the, the curvature. Perpendicular to that, the, the other direction of the arch was put parallelly, as you see here. And the section is not following the curvature. The section is always horizontal. And this uh, top one was put on top and the bottom. Then there is a gap in between because this is horizontal. Then I put small plywood to create a truss structure. Next, please. As you see here, the prevent arch was put diagonally following the curvature. Perpendicular to that, it's almost horizontal and put small uh, the plywood to create the, uh, the truss structure. Next, please. And the swimming pool next to the gymnasium get indirect light through the, the gymnasium and also the skylight. Next, please. Um, this is uh, the, the, the new project, uh, new Pompidou Center in City of Metz. Uh, this is uh, some of the presentation I submitted for the competition. Um, this was my first time uh, winning competition, and uh, the, the, uh, this is a site. Uh, sorry, difficult to see. This is a train. This is a train station, and this is a site. It's a big site, and we are supposed to design the park. Main city is the other side of the train station. This is a famous cathedral here. And also, train station is very part of the historical monument because uh, when German, uh, when uh, Metz was occupied by German, they built this uh, gigantic, uh, the uh, traditional, the big train station here. Um, the, uh, this is a presentation model uh, for the galleries. There is the we call gallery tubes, the three tubes, square tubes, are stuck on top of each other. And each one is 90 meter by 15 meter width. And the three of them has a different directions. As you see here, top tube is directing, uh, the direction is uh, the direction of the cathedral. Second one is facing to the main train station. And uh, this is the view from the end of the, the, uh, the gallery tubes. It's like a picture window framing important monument of the city. This is the cathedral, this one. So next one, next is, uh, sorry, <laughs> can you go back? Second tube, not next tube, second tube is framing uh, the, the, the traditional uh, train station. So the, although the, 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 the museum was built away from the main city, but that I tried to connect the museum with the, the main object of the, 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 the city. And uh, usually we design the building, then we ask the landscape architect to put the trees around the building. However, I did it the other way around. I asked the landscape architect to design the park or garden first. Then I put the big roof on top of it because I wanted to bring the natural nature into the museum. The important future of this museum, the, the, the program said that the, the, they want to open to uh, other European nations and also to all the public. And they wanted to invite the general public whom usually are not interested in the, the museum and piece of uh, uh, fine art, but we wanted to invite anyone from a uh, surrounding area. So I wanted to make, instead of making the, the, the kind of shield <coughs> box, I wanted to make a kind of the open uh, space to the to surrounding condition. Um, the, so the big roof was designed by woven timber structure. This is a, it's, it's not transparent. It's a, we covered by the white P PTFE membrane, uh, Teflon coated, next please, Teflon coated the membrane. Uh, this is a completion. Now we are under the bidding stage. And the roof is a woven uh, stru timber structure. It's laminated timber. Um, idea, ah, by the way, that also the, this, the surrounding facade is made of glass shutter. Uh, in good days, all the shutter goes up and the museum and the garden are totally connected inside and outside. And the roof idea came from a traditional woven bamboo Chinese hut, upside down, to create the, the kind of the column. And as you see, this pattern is hexagon. 
And so the, the, uh, the laminated timber is woven hexagon pattern. And uh, this, the roof itself is a he the sh this hexagon, and also each pattern is a hexagon. As you may know, the shape of the France country is hex almost hexagon. That's why French people uh, call, uh, uh, think that the hexagon is, is their symbol. And that is the kind of the way to win the international competition. <laughs> However, if I propose uh, this roof uh, for the maybe competition in Israel, I have to tell a different story. <laughs> and this is a study model of the roof, the two layer of the laminated timber. And this is the main uh, the forum space looking over the, the, the woven roof. Um, the, this is going to be completed year 2008. Next, please. This is my temporary office in Paris. As you see, this is uh, the Pompidou Center uh, in Paris, designed by Richard Rogers and Del Piano. And I was very lucky to borrow the, 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 the terrace to build my temporary office. And the shape came from this grass uh, tunnel arch. And the uh, roof is also the, the, the sample from the membrane company, and PTFE and PPC, different samples. And uh, there is a translucent uh, the, the foam core insulation, which penetrates the light in the evening. And it's also the bring the natural light into the space in the daytime. Next, please. The other structure is made of a paper chip structure with a wooden joint. Because I didn't have a money to do it, I brought a Japanese student from, uh, Tokyo, from Japan to create a workshop with a French student to spend three months to build by myself. So it's, uh, it's, everything was built by a student. And uh, so the, if you have a chance to come to Paris, you are welcome to come to my, ofi uh, come to my office. However, uh, my office become part of the ex exhibition. So that, uh, that's why you have to buy a ticket to, to come to see me. Uh, next, please. This is very earlier uh, period of paper chip structure, 1990. Uh, this time, I didn't have the, the government, government permission, special authorization, to use the paper chip as a structural member. So there is steel columns supporting the roof. That's why the, the paper chip was not main structure, but it's just the, the, the secondary structure to receive the wind pressure. There's 330 tubes, and the length is eight meter and the diameter is 50, 55 centimeter. Wall thickness is 15 millimeter. Of course, inside is empty. Next, please. Um, uh, there is some bigger diameter tubes. Inside, the, uh, the diameter is 120. Inside, are used as a toilet. So ceiling, also, ceiling height of the toilet is also 8 meter. You get a very good sound effect. <laughs> and uh, also, in, in case, in case you finish with your, your toilet paper, you can tear it off inside the wall. <laughs> Next, please. This is uh, the small library for the poet, uh, built 1991. Still, I didn't have government permission, but my client was very kind to allow me to build this as an experimental structure, but it's still there after uh, 15 years. It's still very good condition. This time, uh, I made a post-tension joint, wooden joint, connected with the, the steel cable inside of the page paper tube to put post uh, tension afterward to connect the wood joint with the paper tube horizontally and vertically. Next, please. Then uh, I designed my own weekend house in order to get government permission, because without this permission, nobody asked me to design the paper building. So I spent one year or more to, to do the testing and also going through the, all the hearing to get uh, this uh, permission. Uh, and I did it, but I didn't have money to realize the building. However, I was very lucky to get small commission from a fashion designer, Issey Miyake, to design his small uh, gallery. So I applied this permission into his uh, gallery. So this is the first permanent uh, the, the, the building, paper chip building with government permission. Next, please. It's simply the paper chip columns and uh, the, the curved. Can you move this slide, please? It's just the columns which create a nice uh, the shadow. Uh, it's moved depending on time of day. 
and also the curved wall has a, a space in between to create a nice linear light behind the wall. Next, please. Then um, I, I uh, recently I well I could afford to to realize my weekend house. However, it was too late because I have no more weekend, so this is not used. <laughs> Next, please. This is a, a, a paper tube structure uh, with as as arch built in 1998, because the, the way paper chip was used is different from previous permission. So again, I have to test it for the paper chip and the joint and the screws so on to create the arch. The span is 27, 27 meter and the height is nine meter. Next, please. Then this is uh, the construction photo of Japanese pavilion for Hanover Expo year 2000. I was very lucky to have uh, the collaboration with Professor Fry Otto in order to develop the uh, paper chip grid shell structure with him. And uh, because of my previous experience, uh, using timber wood joint is rather expensive compared to the, such an inexpensive price of the paper chip. And I started working with a, a German paper chip company and we created 20 meter of the tube uh, without connecting uh, by the wood joint. Because the main theme of the expo was the environmental issue, uh, government, Japanese government selected me to design the building out of recycled material. But my interest is not only making the, the building out of recycled material. Usually problem of expo pavilion is environmental issue because the, we make a lot of building for, the temp, for six months temporary then we dismantle them. Then we create a lot of industrial waste. However, that's why uh, the, I want to design the building. After we, we dismantle, I want to recycle or reuse most of the, uh, the building material. So usually the goal of the, the design is uh, the end of the construction. But my goal was when, uh, uh, my goal was when building was dismantled. There is 1,000 of a scaffolding called the yellow one, it's called vertical one, called the props here. And they can rotate by hand to push up little by little. So there is the, the chart made by computer. We have to know, we know the each column, how many centimeters we have to push up each time. And uh, this is rather a low-tech construction method. Everything was done by hand. But we use only one high-tech method we put 10 antennas to measure the, the changing shape every day from the satellite using a, a GPS global uh, positioning uh, system to, to check the, the, the changing geometry every day from satellite. Next, please. Um, also, I didn't want to uh, use concrete foundation because concrete is rather a difficult material to recycle. So this is the, instead of using concrete foundation, these are wooden box filled with sand, so that, that, that this can be easily uh, uh, the, uh, dismantled and reused. Also, membrane was used from paper. We developed the paper membrane according to German regulation for fire and uh, the, also the waterproofing. Next, please. This is completion. Next, please. I must say I had to make many compromises, not because of the regulation, because we, uh, uh, from the test, by testing and the calculation, we uh, meet all the uh, building regulation of Germany. The problem was the, not the regulation, but the prejudice of the, the, the authority and the proof engineer. They didn't want to realize anything they have never seen. So that, that uh, I must say this is not pure paper chip structure, but this is a kind of hybrid structure between paper chip and wood. This was uh, Professor Fry Otto's idea, having the thin timber structure grid with a ladder, so that we can use for the, the, for, uh, the, for the maintenance. However, the, the authority uh, forced us to make uh, the, the section of this timber four times bigger than it's necessary, so that this is working as a kind of a structure so that I must say this is the hybrid structure between wood and the paper chip. As for the quality of the space, this was exactly what I imagined, so I was very happy about the quality of the space. Next, please. And the, the joint of the paper chip was made of just fabric tape. 
And this simple fabric tape is really the, 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 uh, the perfect for the, the construction of the paper chip. During the erection, angle of the paper chip becomes bigger and it's put natural tension into it. But also during erection, paper chip moves three-dimensionally, rotating, so that it allows such a complicated movement of the paper chip. This is the end of wall made of the paper honeycomb. Uh, paper honeycomb was not used as a structure either. Next, please. Therefore, before the Japanese pavilion, I designed a small uh, gallery for disabled children. And uh, we, I agree with Graham to invite natural light instead of skylight, instead of the, the artificial light. So that, that I created the, the triangle open grid structure using paper honeycomb. So I tested it, and I got the government permission. Then I uh, developed further to use for the, the Japanese pavilion in Hanover. Next, please. This is a paper arch built same year as the Japanese pavilion, year 2000, in New York at the Garden of Museum of Modern Art as a temporary installation. This is a pure paper tube structure because I didn't have to work with the mean authority, so I could realize exactly what I uh, designed. Next, please. This is a also recent project in France near Dijon uh, in, Burgo, in Burgundy. This is a small museum for the history of the canal. This is a river, man-made river. And this is an old boat exhibited under the paper chip structure. And this is a small exhibition place. Next, please. Uh, this is sim simply paper chip. But this is the first permanent uh, paper chip structure in France. And the authority requested us in order to make permanent uh, the, the designing the, the joint. Next, please. In order to replace the paper chip, just in case if it's damaged. This is the aluminum casted joint and the wooden uh, piece inside. Uh, uh, when we want to uh, replace, we just unscrew them. Then this wooden piece goes inside of the paper chip. Then we can remove the paper chip to replace it if it's damaged, but I don't think so. But this is uh, the uh, very advanced uh, joint we created. Next, please. And uh, this is uh, the small museum, uh, the uh, exhibition space. And uh, again, as usual, I didn't have enough budget. I asked the client, I want to design the exhibition. Next, please. As a part of a structure. Uh, this time, I used the L-shaped angle with the hole. This is a standard uh, the, the shelving unit. You buy a do-it-yourself store to make your own uh, bookshelf. And I made, a, I made a column, four pieces together to create a cross-shaped column to put the exhibitions. And also the roof is sitting on this, roof is sitting on this uh, exhibition. So the exhibition workers, are the, the, not only exhibition, but also part of the structure. Next, please. This is Rwanda, 1994. They had the, the, the war between two tribes, Futsu and Tsushi. Over two million people became refugees. And uh, I was shocked to see picture right hand side because people were freezing with a blanket. I thought uh, most of African countries warm the area, but uh, the, I found out in Rwanda they are having very uh, heavy rainy season. Since the shelter given from the United Nations was very poor plastic sheet, that's why they couldn't keep them warm. That's why they was freezing during the rainy season. I thought we have to improve the, the shelter, otherwise any medical care doesn't help them. So I went to the uh, headquarters of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Geneva to propose my idea of making a shelter out of paper tube. Next, please. Left-hand side photo, this is a typical standard refugee shelter in Africa. United Nations just provide them uh, the, the, the two meter by six, uh, sorry, three meter by six meter uh, plastic sheet, <laughs> and the refugees have to cut the trees by themselves to make a frame. Over two million people became refugees, so the, and they cut the trees. This used to be the, the forest. There are many trees, but it's all gone, and the refugees have to go much further cut, to cut more trees, and this become very heavy deforestation and the environmental problem. United Nations provide them aluminum pipes to, to, cut, to stop cutting trees. However, aluminum is a very ex quite expensive material in Africa. That's why refugees sold them out for money. 
and the cutting trees again. That's why aluminum didn't work as an alternative material. And then uh, I was very lucky to propose my idea of using paper tubes at that time. So that's why I was uh, uh, hired, uh, accepted as a consultant to uh, develop this idea further. Next, please. Right hand side, uh, this is a testing structure with paper tube, three different types of structure. I was very lucky to get the support from the, one of the best furniture company in Europe, in Switzerland, B Vitra. As you know, Vitra uh, has many great architecture. This is a furniture museum and a factory designed by Frank Gehry. Behind this museum, there is a seminar house designed by Tadao Ando. Right hand side of this factory, there is a factory designed by Nicolas Grimshaw and Alvaro Shiza. Further right, they have their own fire station designed by Zaha Hadid. So this company has a, such an expensive collection of architecture, and my tent is their cheapest collection. <laughs> right hand side, this is a Bimba camp in Rwanda. Already Rwanda refugees came back to home, and they are accepting refugees from Congo. And I went to there to put 50 units of the, 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 the shelter, shelter with paper as a monitoring stage. Next, please. I have to teach them how to assemble them. I have to see whether this system is easy enough to be, the, to be assembled by themselves. And also, I have to check the, the, the durability and also the termite problem. And uh, the termite problem is very serious in Africa. And before, I, when I was developing, I had some uh, talk with the specialist for, for termite. Uh, he's teaching at uh, university in Holland. And he told me that, that, that because we didn't do any heavy treatment for, for this paper tube, for termite, he said that, that, that usually termite doesn't want to appear in front of the people. That's why they go into, inside of the wood, eat inside. So that if the termite goes into the paper chip, the inside is empty, so they just surprise and disappoint. That's the best way to avoid the termite. That's what the professor said. Next, please. This is a Kobe in Japan. 1995, uh, after the earthquake, over 6,500 people killed. And this town, all the uh, houses uh, burned fire after the earthquake. And in this town, there's a Catholic church, only the statue remained. And uh, I went to there because there's many Vietnamese refugees in this church. And always after disaster, minority people are having a harder time. So I went to there to do something for them. And then I proposed the priest of the church to let's rebuild the church out of paper, church, but he didn't believe me. And I commuted to the church every Sunday. Then finally he trusted me and uh, to, to rebuild the church out of paper, as long as I can do the fundraising by myself, and also we can build by ourselves. Uh, next, please. So I started designing the, the church, uh, as well as fundraising. Same time, also, I built uh, some of the Vietnamese refugees' house. Even after, uh, if, after three months after the earthquake, they are living in plastic like, plastic sheet like this. In rainy days, all the floor get wet, and in shiny, fine days, the inside temperature over 40. So it's really unhealthy condition inside. Also, that the neighbor people try to kick them out because they are afraid that uh, this park is becoming like a slum. So that, that uh, I thought we have to uh, make the shelter uh, more he healthier, but also prettier to be accept accepted by neighbor people to continue living here. And I started building paper, uh, the shelter out of paper tube, 10 centimeter thickness. And the foundation is made of plastic beer container. In Japan, there are the two major beer companies called Kirin and Asahi. And I particularly asked the Kirin company to donate the plastic case, because the other company makes a red, uh, plastic pe uh, case red, which doesn't go with the color of the paper tube. <laughs> Next, please. During the summer, uh, with students, I built the, 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 these shelters. And the roof is uh, the double skins, the two layers. Uh, in the summer, we just open up the gable to have a close ventilation. There's another membrane underneath. <laughs> Next, please. This is Taki, 1999. Also, they have a terrible earthquake. These are the military tents. And uh, because they are so old, they are no longer waterproof. Because of my experience in Kobe and Rwanda, 
I, I know that, that I knew that, that the plastic sheet is very well used during the first stage of the emergency. Uh, that time, 1999, the, uh, Japan was having so-called uh, the bubble period, recession. It was very difficult to money donated. I asked the construction company to donate the plastic sheet with some company name and logo, and I dis distributed them to, uh, uh, by myself. And some of the people uh, extend their house, and some of the people just covered all the, all the, all the military tent. Um, the, the, during the disaster time, this kind of the, the public relation is very important. If you donate money, it's also very important, but you don't know how your money is used during disaster time. But even if you just donate this poor plastic sheet, when you see if CNN or the, the newspaper company take the photo, and if you see your company name on the, on the newspaper or TV, you must be very happy that you may continue supporting us. That's why this kind of uh, public relation is very important during disaster time. Then I met the local architect and local NGO. They asked me to build the Kobe type of the temporary houses because they are facing into the very cold winter with snow. They couldn't, couldn't, they couldn't keep living in this kind of tent structure. Next, please. Then I work with local architect to adapt Kobe type into the local context and climate. First, they have a bigger family, so that the house has to be bigger. And uh, ah, by the way, all the paper tube and the plastic beer container was uh, donated free from local manufacturer. And uh, the also, wall has to be more insulated. And children helped us to put the waste paper inside of the paper tube to make wall more insulated. And uh, the, this plastic sheet from the Japanese construction company was reused as a roof of the, the paper log house. Next, please. This is in, uh, in India, 2001. West side of India, they have a terrible earthquake. And uh, I was asked to come over to build. And it was no problem to find the paper chip locally. The local textile industry makes their own paper chip to put their uh, fabric textile around the paper chip. But uh, I couldn't find the, the plastic beer container locally because nobody drink beer and alcohol in there. Then my local architect suggested me to use the Coca-Cola uh, uh, plastic container, but I thought that is out of context. So that, that uh, I decided to use the, 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 the brick and the concrete from destroyed building to, make a created, to create a, a traditional mud floor. And the roof was also made of two layers of the, the, the uh, woven cane net locally available with very thin plastic inside for the waterproofing. Next, please. Some of them are used as a, the school. Some of them are used as a house. Next, please. This is a recent project in Sri Lanka after the tsunami. And uh, the, uh, the, I was uh, asked to design the house uh, for the, the minority Islamic fishermen in the south side of the, the Sri Lanka uh, village called Kirinda. Um, the, this is a permanent house. Uh, I have to build 70 units. And also the government made a kind of a standard plan to give away to the old NGO because they don't want to make an NGO make a diff totally different type of a house. I respected the local, uh, the, the, this plan, but I made my own uh, adjustment. This is the, the, the size given, the two bedroom with the one living space which has to be divided into the third space because of the, the, for this uh, Islamic family. And uh, usually they have the, the bathroom, uh, the kitchen and the shower and toilet connected to the house. I just uh, separated this two co structure core and creating the, the space in between, but the, the, all the house is covered, covered by the roof. So this is semi outdoor space. And by using holding door, uh, living space and outside the shaded area is totally connected. Because of the clim warm climate, always people are eating and walking under the, sh the trees, under the shading area. So that uh, without extend the total changing the floor plan, uh, given floor plan, I just created a uh, semi outdoor space. And uh, also, I wanted to give the, some money to local people. And uh, this white thing is not white, it's a, it's a mud brick. Uh, it's the shape of the, the mud brick is a kind of Lego type of the brick. It was uh, in invented in, in India. 
and the, the, because of the shape, uh, uh, unskilled people can stack them. And I minimize the area of the structure. And uh, in between, I just put the furniture, factory made furniture, uh, the closet and the shelves and the window and doors. They are made of the rubber trees. In, in, in Sri Lanka, they have a big tire industry and they plant a lot of rubber trees. Rubber trees are uh, uh, rather weak material, never used for the construction material. But this is usually used for the, some uh, the dish and uh, some craft. So I use this weak, uh, cheap material to design this factory made uh, non-structural uh, wall, just plugged in to make the construction speed high, uh, the quicker. Next, please. Uh, we finished already 40 units and 30 more to go, and people already moved in. This is the last project. This is the paper charge in, in Kobe, 1995. As you see, all the construction was done by student. And we spent uh, five weeks to finish this church. Next, please. This is the last slide. And this is the first time and they're having morning service under the roof. And here's a priest. He said, uh, uh, he asked me not to put any symbol or any icon of a Catholic church because he wanted to use this space as a community center, inviting the, the, anybody from, uh, from the, the neighbor without not depending on the, the type of the, the religion they have. However, I wanted to bring some kind of the, 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 my experience visiting wonderful uh, uh, church all over the world. So what I did is putting the, the, this uh, paper chip, creating the, the oval shape, this was borrowed from the, the one of my favorite charts in Rome, designed by Bellunini, to create to articulate outside the corridor space and the main uh, space inside. This church was in Kobe until last year. Uh, this church, uh, after the ten years, they decided to renovate the whole site, and although the, 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 all the people, local people, wanted to keep it, but they decide because they had some requests from. Uh, uh, Taiwan. They also had a terrible earthquake in 1999. We uh, uh, donated this church to the Taiwan uh, for the, the disaster area. So this church is having another uh, second life in Taiwan. So this almost it became the permanent church. Um, I was very, as I said at the, 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 the beginning of my lecture, architects always make a monument. And uh, I'm, I, I like to make a monument too, but I was very happy that, that uh, as a result, this church was meant to be temporary, but this became permanent, permanent because people love this church. And uh, that, so that is a way to make the building permanent, not depending on the type of the material you use. So I was very happy to make the monument, and I'd like to continue making the monument for people. Thank you. I just need a project in uh, Northern uh, Europe to prove it. <laughs> Depending on the, the climate, uh, because I've been uh, mostly uh, in, the, in, in Tokyo area is rather warm climate. Also uh, in Japan, the, 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 the people still doesn't heat the room 24 hours. And uh, uh, so that, 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 that now I'm building a house in the United States according to the, the also that the very tight in by, uh, uh, the insulation uh, barrier is required, even in Europe. So that it's really depending on the climate. And the paper chip is just, uh, the, 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 the just framing material. Insulation is depending on other things. So that uh, depending on the, the, the local regulation and the climate, I always design totally differently. So what I showed mostly is the design for the rather warm climate. So I need more project in the northern uh, climate to prove the, my ability to adjust it. Where is this small restaurant in Tokyo? 
自由が丘自由が丘パブリックビッグエクスビジョンホールウィハフトデザインアコーディングジャーマンファイアコードビコースディスシングルストーリービルディングウィアリクエステッドユースソーコールビートファイアレイテッドマテリアルデンデンウィテステッドウィアイノー